All right, how about some bonus footage? I got this 2005 Chevy Silverado. It actually belongs to the same guy as the 2006. It's one of my best customers. And the ABS light's on, and it has the same C0040 right front wheel speed sensor circuit fault. So let's see if we can track this one down, try to do a little bit better job this time. Now this truck's a 2500, and it has the Duramax diesel engine. Looks like it's also got some glow plug codes and then some EGR stuff. So we'll have to do some snooping on that, see if it even has an EGR valve or if it's been deleted, and then uh, possibly go after some glow plugs. But that's not fun on these Duramaxes. They, uh, they can be a real bear. All right, scope's hooked up. Here we go. Spin the wheel, spin, spin, spin. Stop the scope. Well, you can see it's doing something, but it's not not much. All right, same test on the left front wheel speed sensor. So it's got quite a bit more amplitude. Well, according to our friends at General Motors, this wheel speed sensor, you know, again, it creates its own AC voltage. It should put out a minimum of 100 millivolts while spinning the wheel by hand. So this is just a digital multimeter set up in millivolts AC. I'm spinning the wheel right now. See, I'm able to get about, I don't know, 75 maybe maximum millivolts out of the wheel speed sensor. So yeah, the left side, I'm easily able to get over 100 millivolts. So these wheel speed sensors are real sensitive to the air gap. I think first step, we'll just take the wheel speed sensor out or try to take it out and clean up the mating surface. What happens in our area, they usually come with a shim, a metal shim underneath of the sensor. Sometimes they have two shims and there's, I think the shims are stainless, but the wheel bearing is steel and you know, you get rust jacking between the shim and the wheel bearing, pushes the, the sensor up a little bit, and then you know it's still reading a frequency, but it just doesn't have enough voltage, enough amplitude to, to satisfy the ABS module. We're in. Of course, the brakes on this 2500 are substantially bigger than the 1500, so you do have to break everything down in order to access the wheel speed sensor, which is right there. Not a big deal. The only thing is it has these locking lug nuts because it has aftermarket rims. So I finally broke down and bought a whole kit. Comes with a bunch of different styles of sockets. These work good for aftermarket truck rims. I wish I could find an equivalent set for car rims. You know where they have the, especially the ones where they have the little squiggly pattern in the face of the lug nut. Because I've run into situations before where People have locking lug nuts and they've lost the key or the socket or whatever you want to call it. So, anyway. I don't remember who makes this one. Oh, Steelman Pro 78537. Anywho, here is our wheel speed sensor. And it's looking like we've got a little bit of rust jacking going on there. See that little gap there? And a little formation on the close side. So let's peel it out of there and see what we can do. Truck's pretty clean. Actually has some of the socket head left on the socket head cap screw. Sometimes they're pretty nasty. Carefully. Carefully. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Well, we're getting a wheel speed sensor now. Bummer. Well, that's the risk you take. Yep, 
Yeah, so there's the rusty, crusty nastiness right there that was causing us all the problems. Rust jacking. I don't know if we ever would have got it out of there in one piece. There it is. Okay, got us a new wheel speed sensor. It is an AC Delco part number 19300584. Leave it to GM. It's a different part number than the 06 Silverado 1500 that we had. Whatever. Anyway, I cleaned up the surface here, scraped off all the rust, cleaned out the bore, scraped out all that rust, blew everything off and out as well as I could. Try not to turn this thing while you're doing that because that's the inside of the wheel bearing. Slathered it with some silicone grease. This is Silglide. And we're going to put it back together. See what happens. Of course you can use an aftermarket wheel speed sensor if you so choose. They're all made in China. Including this one. test it. Okay, same setup as before. Here we go. Yeah, what a difference, huh? Let's uh, bump that up. Oh, let's see if we can get a average voltage measurement. Yeah. These voltage measurements on the hand tech scope are basically worthless. It takes so long for it to update that unless you have a continuous signal, it, it doesn't help you at all. Anyway, we can obviously see much higher amplitude on the signal, and we're getting, what, 300 plus millivolts you know, out of the sensor. So a huge improvement. And that is also why I bought two wheel speed sensors, because the other side you know, it was still over that 100 millivolt threshold, but not by very much. Certainly not as strong as the new sensor that we installed. So we're going to go ahead and tear apart the other side at a minimum, clean the mounting surface. But chances are we'll break that one too, so go ahead and replace it. Alright. Left side came out in one piece. So that's good. Save this guy 60 bucks. Let me see. She's got the same problem. The rust, the scale, the buildup. This is what happens where we live. And this is a pretty clean truck. You can imagine what it's like on some of the fine specimens that I've worked on. Of course, no inspections here, so most people just disregard the ABS light and that they have some problems they yank the fuse out see it all the time this is a carbide scraper by the way it'll cut right through that rust Alright, I'm pretty happy with that. And the results look pretty good. All over 300 millivolts. Much more amplitude on our signal. Cool beans. Not happy, but it's really that I'm playing games on my phone and not paying attention to you. Here's what I've observed from watching a lot of YouTube videos. Yeah. Behind every great man, there's a great woman. That's me. Texting on her phone. Or playing a game. Or playing a game. Or playing a game. 
like to point out that she is double Hufflepuffed today. Oh yeah, I am. That's right. This sweatshirt though, I haven't washed it yet, so it has a bunch of fuzzies. My black shirt is all fuzzed out now. Okay. Oh, right. and I got my water bottle. <laughs> Triple Hufflepuffed, everyone. Not a Hufflepuff phone case. No, it broke. But in December, I'm super excited. All right, everybody, we got family dinner. Gotta cut the video short. I think the bonus footage ended up being more interesting than the regular video, but we'll see. We'll see in the edit. Maxwell doesn't get to go. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Bye. Well, not so fast, big guy. I cleared the ABS code and it comes back almost immediately. So we missed something. I got the scope and I'm hooked up tapped into the wires right here just before the plug where they go into the ABS module. Let me uh, spin this wheel and we have nothing. So that's a problem. Now I looked at the wiring diagram. According to the OE diagram there are no connectors between the ABS module here and the connector at the top of the shock tower. So somewhere between those two points, that circuit is broken. Well, there are no connectors in that wiring harness. It runs continuously from this connector right here at the shock tower, along the frame rail, down, underneath of the radiator, and then back up the frame rail. And it actually runs right across where the left side wheel speed sensor is and all the way back to the ABS module. There are no connectors. There's nowhere to split the harness. So just doing a visual inspection, I think I found the problem. Can you guys see that? Right there. Let me, uh, let me get you a better look. Man. It's in a heck of a spot here. Underneath of the fender liner. Come on. Looks like a dark green wire to me. So maybe we can get to that easier from the top. All right. Oh, come on, really? Well, there's the money shot right there. Dark green wire. Hacked right in two. Looks to me like somebody has fixed this before. I don't think that's a factory tape job. So yeah, I don't have an explanation. We're gonna peel all that tape off there. Patch those wires up. Looks like the tan wires got some, some damage too. And uh, see what we get. Huh. Looks pretty good. I used my non-insulated butt connectors and then the adhesive lined shrink tube. That's my preferred method. There we go, looks good, taped it up. Reattached it to the little push nail anchor. Clipped it back in the little clippy back here. Looks good. I do not have an explanation for how that wire got damaged. Uh, yeah, I can't figure it out. This CAC tube here, you know, it's pretty far away from the harness. I don't know if maybe somebody, somebody got into it while they were changing out a steer, power steering pump, maybe? He said he had the Hydra Boost replaced at one point, so I don't know if they, I don't know, got into it trying to get one of the power steering lines off or something. I really don't know. Anyway, I think that's the only problem. Let's uh, do a little testing here. That's what we want to see. Cool. All right, folks, that ended up being a lot more interesting than the wheel speed sensor issues on the 1500 kind of threw me a curveball. Now, I don't know if it was wrong of me to go after the wheel speed sensors initially. I'm not sure. The thing is, I looked up the code setting criteria for that C0040 code, and what GM tells you is, I think there's three different criteria, and it basically comes down to that the ABS module does not see a signal from the wheel speed sensor for I don't know, like 120 seconds or something like that. But 
you know, when I tried to clear that code, it would come back immediately without even the truck moving. So it seems obvious that they're using a bias voltage or some kind of strategy like that to check the sensors without the truck moving. And it doesn't say anything about that in the code setting criteria. So I don't know. Maybe what we should have done initially was clear the code and see if it came back. And then that would have given us an idea, you know, an indication that we had an open circuit, not just a, a signal strength issue. But, you know, I followed the diagnostic guidelines that GM gives you in the service information. And it says if you have less than 100 millivolts output from the sensor that you have to do something before you can move on to the next step. So that's what I chose to do. And it did cost us a wheel speed sensor, but that's not unusual, you know, in this area. You got a, a pretty slim chance of getting them out in one piece, especially if they're the OEM sensors. Anyway, we got the issue fixed. Let's move on. You guys can leave your parts cannon comments down below. Well, looks like it's crow for dinner again tonight. Conditions for setting the DTC. The EBCM detects an open or shorted wheel speed sensor circuit for 500 milliseconds. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, it's fixed. Let's move on. We're having fun now. I guess we'll call this bonus, bonus footage. On the EGR valve. This is the little motor that controls it. The valve itself is fine. The spool moves freely. Nothing wrong with it. But the little motor here, I can bi-directionally command it to move with the scan tool and it's, it doesn't. It kind of, if it does, it's real jerky and janky and yeah, it's just not right. So you can buy the motor separately. You don't have to buy the whole EGR valve assembly. So I've got one of those coming. But the glow plugs, I'm not sure about that. I am unable to bi-directionally control that module with any scan tool that I have. And it doesn't seem to do anything when you turn the key on other than give the little curly cue, you know, little curly cue on the dash light for about one second. So I don't know if the ambient temperature is too high and it's not letting the glow plugs come on. I'm going to have to research that a little bit more. All right, guys, real quick, I'll show you the test setup for the glow plug module here. So it's got power coming in on this pink wire, a ground on the pink with yellow, and then CAN bus communication on dark green and yellow. So, And there's also a big fat power wire, which is this guy right here. So you see I've got my test light hooked up right now and that is on the pink wire so we have power. That's power key on. Okay, test light hooked up to the positive terminal of the battery and we have ground on the pink with yellow. All right, dark green and yellow are the communication lines. I've got the scope hooked up. See we've got a nice CAN signal, both CAN high and CAN low. I don't know if this is a class two or a class one. It doesn't really matter. The uh, yeah, the lights are on, but nobody's home. And if I put an amp clamp around that big fat 175 amp wire there, I get no output ever. So, yeah. And we may have bad glow plugs, I don't know. It's kind of hard to test those without the glow plug module working. And they're each individually controlled by a transistor, so the module should tell us if the glow plugs are bad. But, you know, we could check resistance through the harness. But the best way to check glow plugs is with an amp clamp. So anyway, I'm saying the glow plug module is smoked and we need a new one. All right, folks, I think we're going to stop here. The EGR valve is working and it goes through a self-test every time the engine starts. It passed the self-test without setting any codes, so I'm happy with that. Here's the part number from AC Delco for the actuator if you're curious. It is kind of pricey, but not as pricey as the whole EGR valve. Anyway, a lot of times on these Duramaxes, the insufficient EGR flow codes are going to be set by the air filter or by the exhaust, especially if people have put 
you know, aftermarket exhaust or aftermarket air filters on them. Like you see this one's got this Fram Air Hog or something, whatever it is, aftermarket upgraded air filter. And it just messes up the flow rate through the mass airflow sensor. And when the engine does the EGR check, what it does is open the EGR valve some amount and then look for a decrease in the mass airflow rate. And if it doesn't see the decrease that it wants, it's going to set that code. And there's lots of uh, PCM flash updates to get rid of the sensitive or to reduce the sensitivity of that self test. So, Eric O at South Main Auto, he's got a good video about a Duramax that has the P0, whatever it is, 404, because of the air filter. And he did a, a PCM reflash on that truck as well, I believe. We'll do a quick bench test on this EGR control motor just in case there's any skeptics watching. So classic automotive actuator setup. You got five pins in the connector here. The two on the bottom are the 12 volt DC that controls the motor. The three on the top are the potentiometer that's used for position feedback set up in a voltage divider configuration. So we should be able to pick two out of the three here and see variable resistance based on the position if I can get my thing right here so you see we're varying from what four kilo ohms down to what 500 ohms something like that so the position feedback part of it seems to be working I'm just gonna hook up 12 volt power to the other two terminals here on my 12 volt power supply and it's doing nothing pulling I don't know 100 milliamps but no output reverse the polarity yeah we got nothing oh oh I thought I heard it try come on come on little guy you can do it yeah, so it's fighting back a little bit, like it's harder to push than with the power disconnected. Yeah. Anyway, the windings in this motor are junk, that's why it doesn't work. The glow plug issue, I think we're going to have to wait on that. If I clear the codes, it immediately returns with this P0670, and I'm not able to do any bidirectional controls on the module with either the Autel or my Snap-on scan tool. So. Something's going on, and I suspect it's the module. I don't think these had to be programmed on a 2005, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So I got to do a little bit of research and uh, make sure I'm not biting off more than I can chew as far as replacing that module. But anyway, that's going to be it for the video, I think, guys. It, I don't know how this is going to turn out, if I'll do a part one, part two, or if it's just going to be one long meandering mess. Max, buddy, we got a mess in here. We need to clean house. Good talk. All right, folks, I think that's it uh, for real this time. I did order the glow plug control module. It's not in stock in the GM dealer network. They had to get it direct from the vendor. So he said it's gonna take about five days. And I don't think it requires programming. He's checking on that for me, but it looks like we're gonna be, gonna be okay. Pretty sure that the PCM is trying to talk to the module. It's got powers and grounds. It's just, for whatever reason, it's not working. And I don't think it's temperature dependent. The service information says that the glow plugs should run for two seconds uh, at full, whatever, full whack, and then it pulse width modulates it from there for an additional two seconds, and then depending on temperature, it can go longer. So, yeah, we'll figure that out. I probably need to get set up to program. I don't have a J box, and I've never done any programming, so it's going to be a, a learning curve, but. You know, all these newer vehicles, you know, they have programmable modules and, you know, I'm really stuck when I had to replace something like that. You got to send them to the dealership. We don't have like a mobile guy who comes around and programs or, or does diagnostics or anything like that in this area. So, yeah, I kind of need to have that. Anyway, why don't you guys down in the comment box tell me if you like this kind of video where it's just sort of all over the place and multiple different repairs. Or if you think it would be better if I just, you know, focused on one thing. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know if maybe the videos would get more traffic if it was 
you know, specific to a single issue or if I shouldn't worry about that and it's just kind of like entertainment and, you know, I bring you guys along for the ride. But I don't know if you noticed, vehicles never come into my shop that just have one problem. There's always more to the story and, you know, I don't ever know what it's going to be when they come. It just, you know, kind of grows organically and I try to get everything on camera that I can because I think it's interesting or if I think it's interesting. But uh, yeah, you guys tell me what you think. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.